Hey guys, Ross here from Graphic Designer Pro. The other day we had an interesting question in our paid members Facebook group. So we've put together this quick and easy tutorial explaining how to go about replicating this effect in Adobe Illustrator. There's a link below this video where you can download the template file so you can easily follow along. So let's jump into Illustrator now and I'll hand you over to our lead designer, Rory, who will take you through it. So we're just going to attempt to create something similar and put our own twist on it as well. As you can see, we've got some vectorized outline text here that we've been able to warp in a similar manner. Now, if we go over to the right hand side, we have another artboard set up just with the basic graphic that we're going to warp in this way and a rectangle. So if I zoom in to the graphic, you can see this is just some outlined text. We've got some stroked lines down at the bottom here and some smaller text. So very simple, nothing special going on just yet. So what we need to do to start creating a warped version of this is create a symbol out of this. Now we have the graphics that are going to be warped on the front side of this cylinder and then on the back as well. So what I'm going to do is grab our graphics here and this can apply to any text or vector graphics. It doesn't have to be text at all. So all I'm wanting to do here is create a duplicate. So holding option on a Mac or alt on a PC, I can click and drag a I'll hold shift as well just to lock it along that horizontal plane and I want to make sure that this has enough spacing we don't want this to be too close together otherwise the effect is going to make the text a little bit difficult to read I'm going to go with something like this we can always go back and change this and play around with different spacing there is a lot of trial and error involved with this process next I want to create a symbol from these graphics so selecting all of these graphics here they're not grouped in any way but it doesn't matter for for creating a symbol. I'm going to go up to window and navigate down to symbols here. I have this set up on the right hand side and all I need to do is drag this selection into this panel. Next we'll get this box popping up and we just want to make sure that this is set to a graphic and that it's a static symbol. We can rename it as well but I'm not going to worry about that just now. I'm just going to go ahead and click OK. So next we have our rectangle here and this is what we're going to use to actually create a 3D cylinder shape from. So we can do that by going up to effect down to 3D and we have a revolve option here so clicking that you can see already this is going to create a cylinder shape. I'm not worrying too much about any of these settings just now. What I want to do is go straight to the map art option and this is where we can actually map our symbol to this shape. So at the moment we have the top of the cylinder selected. If we go up to this surface setting I can scroll through these. That's the bottom and three of three is the side or the edge that we want to apply these graphics to. To the left of that we have a drop down where it says symbol and as you might imagine we are able to select our symbol from here. So the symbol above is the one we used for our example so we're going to select this new symbol one that we just created and you can see it's being placed into this editor and it's being mapped to the cylinder. So first of all I want to make sure that this invisible geometry option is checked and that's just going to get rid of the grey shading and we have a transparent cylinder with our graphics still mapped on it. Now we can resize this and just be aware that the transform handles in this view aren't the same as your artboard so we're not able to snap things in the same way it's not nearly as intuitive so just be wary that if you skew this by accident you have to basically start again so all I'm doing is holding shift and I'm just going to scale this up on both sides this is where again a bit of trial and error is involved I want to try and match the spacing between these two graphics on either side or the total amount should be what's being created either side so I'm just really trying to eyeball this for the time being I can always go back into this and adjust it some more so I think something like this will do for now I'm going to click OK and now I can just play around with the angles so you'll see we have this box here and if I hover over any of the edges they will highlight and I can just change the angle of that plane so for example I'm just going to click and drag this round and really we can just do this to our hearts content until we get something that we like the look of so I'm going with something like this I'll maybe drag the box down a bit so we get a little bit more perspective here. So I quite like this slightly offset text. It doesn't have to be centered, but again, you can play around with this as much as you like until you get something that you're happy with. 
So I'm just going to go ahead and click OK. And this is already looking good, but I can take it a step further. I'm going to go up to Object and Expand Appearance. And that's just going to expand this back into editable vectors again. It's obviously created this holding shape here, but we can easily get rid of that by going up to Object, Clipping Mask and Release. So this is just created by default when we use these 3D effects. I also want to ungroup this. You might need to do this a few times. If you click on these hidden lines, if it's still selecting everything, ungroup it again until when you click on them, nothing else is being selected as it is now. And I can just basically delete these lines that are remaining. If I click and drag over it, we've got one more over here. And that's basically us left with our vectorized warped graphics here. I can select all of this and I can apply some more changes to the angles here, more similar to the example we have. And really that's it. We can play around with the colors and do whatever we could do with any other vector design from this point onwards. Okay guys, so there you have it. Just knowing the tools and features that are at your disposal in the likes of Illustrator can make a design like this easy to achieve. And if you want to learn more about graphic design, we've created a free one hour training where we reveal our top five secrets to creating beautiful graphic design, along with our six steps to making money as a graphic designer. So make sure to sign up for the next free webinar. The link is in the description. You're not gonna to want to miss this. I'll see you there.